Hi, I'm Ken Ellison from Ellison Machine Shop. You know me, I'm your engine guy. I got something today I'm ecstatic to share with you guys. I got one of the coolest motors that have ever come in my shop. And I'm telling you, that's saying a lot because I've been doing this now, as I tell you all the time, I got 38 years experience. I eat, sleep, and breathe engines. And this is a motor that I'm gonna tell you in a minute what it is, but before we do that, I'm gonna let you guys look at it for a while while I tell you some more info, and I'm gonna let you try to guess at it because this is pretty cool. And I'm really curious just to see how many, uh, how many of you real car guys out there can figure this out. I have an engine here that I have heard about. I have never seen one. I've never seen one in a magazine. Nobody's ever bought one into my shop until now. I've never seen one at the track. Never known anybody to own it. I only heard about this one time from Brad Wallace, a Wallace Engine Company, one of my old mentors, a, a good guy, fantastic motor builder. He passed away about a year ago, good buddy. He told me about this and I always thought it was so cool. And I just recently had a guy walk through the door and said, hey, uh, my dad has a, an engine and his dad's in his 80s and he wants to rebuild it. This engine hasn't run since 2000 when he parked his car. So this engine right now has been sitting for 18 years. It developed a noise in it and this thing, this thing was flying. Now, I want, I want you to, to, to really try to wrap your head around what we got here. This isn't just an engine. This isn't just something that's modified. This is historic racing history. And this engine, I believe me when I tell you, this thing is an absolute art form. And the man who built it and, and put it together the first time around is a genius. I'm not gonna take credit for this combination. I could have easily rebuilt this motor and when I got it done, showed it to you and, and act like it was my design, but it's not my design. I'm the guy who's got the honor of freshening it up. Uh, trying to correct some things and maybe update a few little things because this is old school technology. Maybe we can do things a little bit better, but I'm telling you the guy who built this is an absolute fabricator, craftsman, genius, engine builder extraordinaire. Um, I, I was given two books, huge volumes of all the information of this car, front to back, all, and, and there's so much information in it that different receipts, I'm not sure who the engine builder was. Um, next time I talk to the customer, I'm gonna to try to find out who actually did this because I really wanna give the gentleman credit. Uh, and personally, I wanna know who did it. But um, we're gonna do more than one uh, video on this, but we're gonna start off right here. Now, I'm gonna show you this. Now, when I, you know, I, I want you to hang in here with me. Okay, don't, 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 don't let me lose you. This is so cool. You'll, you'll be glad, you'll be glad you did. Now, I know some of you guys are like, oh man, oh I am, I, if it ain't a Mopar, I don't like it. If it ain't a Chevrolet, I don't like it. If it ain't a Ford, I don't like it. Man, this here, if you don't get this, you just don't get it. This is, like I said, this is racing technology. This is how our, our industry started. This is how our sport has progressed. So I wanna show you this motor, and I'm, and I'm not gonna tell you what it is, I'll tell you a little bit more about it, but while you're looking at it, I'm gonna, we're gonna go around and let you look at it. I'll tell you a little bit more about it, and you guys can try to guess what it is. And I, I'm asking you to do me a favor. This is just a curiosity thing. Um, please don't say it if you, don't, don't lie, don't lie. If you know what this is, comment on it and say, hey, I knew what that was. This, this isn't a live video. This, I don't care if you're seeing this five years from now. Just say, just let me know that you've seen it, you knew what it was. And if you don't know what it is, put your best guess in. I'm just curious to see how close you guys will get to this because that's how unusual this motor is. So anyhow, okay, it's a six cylinder. And I know with some of you guys, I just lost you. Like, oh wow, big deal, it's a six cylinder. This is a 310 cubic inch motor that is, makes 625 horsepower. That's more than two horsepower per cubic inch. Now, if you don't think that's a lot of horsepower, Think about it this way. Let's say you got a 454 Chevy. Do, do you have a naturally aspirated 454 Chevy on pump, I mean on, on race fuel, you know, no blowers, no nitrous, making 900 horsepower? This motor here, this is a six cylinder making over two horsepower per cubic inch. So that puts a little bit in perspective. This is a wild engine. It's from what I'm told from the paperwork and so forth, we have a 13 to one cubic inch motor, okay? It's supposed to be aluminum rods roller cam, okay? Now, this right here, for some of you guys may recognize this. This is actually, is kind of a giveaway, but it's a six cylinder, so that messes you up. But this engine right here has all type of what we would consider pro stock type modifications to a six cylinder head, with the exceptions of this is, you know, it's a six cylinder as opposed to a V8. Now, 
This engine uh, ran 920 in a little altered car. Um, that's flying. I mean, that's, that is definitely hauling the freight, no doubt about it. Uh, as you can see, it has, we got, we, got a, we got a nice big oil pan, fabricated oil pan that someone put on it. This here, push rod cover. For some of you, that might be a telltale giveaway. There's a space down here where it's all opened up where I can actually touch the push rods. But there's a Enderly fuel injection system that goes on here that will seal all of this up. You can look down here where apparently they cut and TIG welded the timing cover and moved all of that out. So apparently we have some type of adjustment in here, which I find to be very clever. Uh, I don't know where this balancer came from. I've never seen nothing like it. So it's really, really, really odd. Uh, on, the, on the exhaust side over here, this, is a, this might be a giveaway for some of you guys, but you still might not know what it is. This is an exhaust plate where the exhaust side of the heads have been, head has been cut off has been cut off and the port has been raised. So it's an exhaust plate which helps instead of the gas coming out of the cylinder and making a sharp turn and restricting the flow, it now comes up real high like this and makes a gradual bend and then turns into the header and goes back. You probably never seen this. I've only seen this one other time in my career. Right there, if you look in here on the rock arm, what that looks like right there which was on the top of the valve, and most people would say that's a lash cap. That is not a lash cap. That is a keeper. That keeper, that's the valve locks, and the valve locks usually go into the keeper groove and the retainer comes up around it. This particular one goes into the keeper groove and grabs, like if this is the valve, goes into it like that, and it comes around and forms two halves. That's what that line is, where two keeper grooves come together and the rocker arm is pushing up and down on the keeper. If you don't follow that, when I get it all apart, I'll show you that in depth, because that's really cool, and you'll, you'll understand it a little bit more. Now, back on the intake side, back on the intake side, and this is another dead giveaway from you guys who recognize some of this stuff. You come around like this, you can see how big the port used to be. You can see where they epoxied it all up. This has had hours and hours of work on it. And I'm sure this epoxy work was a lot better looking uh, when it was fresh. And, and But this has got a lot of hours worth of running on it. So some of it ain't quite as sharp looking as it ought to be. And after all, like I said, this this is an old motor. This, this, motor, um, this motor was built back in the 80s. And some, some little bit more information. Uh, I'm going to tell you what this is in just a second, in case you don't know. This motor has intake valves, according to paperwork, 2.250 intake valves on the six of them. 1.171 exhaust valves on, on, on the exhaust. Now, along with seeing this port and this exhaust plate, a lot of you guys are zeroing in on this. This is a six-cylinder Ford motor. This is, this is a 300 six-cylinder Ford pickup truck engine that has got 351 Cleveland cylinder heads on it. Now, if you look real close on this, it doesn't have a head. It's got heads that were cut up into six segments, okay? They were cut up, and from what I understand, I haven't personally done all the research to build one of these, but you can't just put the one head on four cylinders because... Uh, I believe the bore spacing is different. If I'm wrong on that, don't. it doesn't matter because I'm shooting from the hip here on this stuff. I'm taking this apart for the first time. I'm learning it. But this here, this here is a, is a six-cylinder head made out of cutting up 351 Cleveland heads, putting one of the biggest port designs ever made. Um, this is what Bob Glidden, th th these type modifications is what Bob Glidden ruled pro stock racing in. He was the most decorated pro stock racer of all times, uh, and and nobody could catch those Pintos at the at the time. I should say say Pintos, but it's Cleveland. Um, it's all set up. It's got a, a, a fabricated fabricated uh, uh, stud girdle set up, and maybe you recognize this Moroso valve cover. This, this is a very popular valve cover for the Clevelands, except it's, it had to cut two of them in half and take weld them together. What, 
what a beautiful job that somebody did on this just to put it all together it's got a place for a zeus fastener I, i'm pretty sure that's probably where his hood scoop bolts to it just just a really cool classy little engine this engine you can see all the epoxy work where they joined it together you can also see on the other side where the pieces were segmented together and they had to run epoxy I'm not a, I'm not 100% certain of what this is going to look like when I get it off, but I'm assuming they probably went in there and furnace brazed or welded these things back together uh, after after getting it to fit the way they wanted to, and of course having the plate running down it helps secure it and keeps it all together, and then I'm assuming the epoxy was to keep this chicken from spraying the leak. <laughs> I mean this this is this is a lot a lot of surgery to put this together. Um, anyhow 310 six-cylinder ford ford truck motor with a clean with cleveland four barrel closed chamber heads on it ball size valves in it um 13 to 1 making 625 horsepower supposed to be aluminum rod and i read some paperwork where it's got a lightened crank where they went in because because on this motor they did make one of these with a steel crank and i'm assuming that's the one they got and they lightened this up so anyhow uh, I'm stoked. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, I'm going to take this apart a little bit at a time. Um, I, I'm not going to really jump on this one and go real crazy with it because I got too much other work that's in front of it. But I can't wait to get it apart. I actually uh, actually told the guys I'm going to start using my lunchtime to, to play around with this just because I want to. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of time in it every day this week. And, and uh, when I get it apart and I got some more stuff to show you, uh, I'll be back with you, but I'm really hoping that this thing isn't hurt bad Because um, I don't know if the customer if this thing was total would Be willing to build another one from scratch because this is a really really expensive little project uh, Freshening it up is one thing starting completely over is entirely another and I tell you the truth. I'm I won't um I won't pull any punches the guy the guy who the guy who did this is an artist and uh I have a feeling maybe I could do this, but until I actually tried, I don't know for sure that I could. So I'm pretty impressed. And I hope you're impressed too. And as I always say, when you come to my page, you follow my channel, you'll get to see things that you don't get to see all the time. Because I'm not going to post the same old crap that everybody else does. You can watch that stuff on their page. Um, when, you, when you follow me, I'm going to show you stuff that's different. And I, won't, I probably won't be posting a whole lot of things, not, not as often as other people do. But to me, it's all about learning. It's all about the love of the business. Um, I love engines. And this right here, just to me, epitomizes what racing is. I remember when I got in this business, I, I got in this business when I was 15 years old. By the time I was 16, I bought my first engine. By the time I was 17, I owned the shop. Been in business ever since. Um, one day I'll tell you that story if you guys are interested. Uh, back when I got in business, there wasn't parts everywhere like I told you. We used to get into catalogs and try to read and figure out which parts would interchange with other engines. Trying to see if you could put Chevy Pistons in a Ford or Ford Pistons in a Chevy or Mopar or Pontiac or what have you. And this, this guy really, really did something pretty spectacular. So uh, as, I, as I get this apart, I'll be sharing it with you. Uh, stay tuned to this one and do I don't I, I don't I don't usually do this matter of fact I don't know if I've ever done this tag your gearhead friends in this you uh, this is the first one I've ever seen chances are you've never seen it and chances are you'll never see it again um, this is a really cool motor spread this one around a little bit there's enough 302 Fords and small block Chevys and 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 even Hemis and Pontiacs and you know you we all see that stuff you may not see this one again. This is pretty cool, man. Tag, tag one of your gearhead friends that like this. Spread the word on this one. And uh, thanks for watching, and we'll be back soon.